first of all, proud of our guys, um, our staff, our team. James Madison's got a good football team. We knew that coming in. We knew it was going to be a four-quarter type game. Uh, they came out and tried to occupy the ball, um, you know, melting the clock down and, you know, just trying to run that clock so we limit our plays offensively. Um, they did a pretty good job of that in the first half, you know, and, and really didn't try to throw the football much at all. And I thought at halftime, you know, you're coming in, it's a great job by our offense to get down there and get some points right before half. That was huge, I thought. Um, and then to come out in the second half and, and you know, mount a drive and go down and, and do some good stuff offensively, defensively, really just have played a great second half. Uh, shut down their running game and um, made them try to throw the football a little bit and, and, and just really did a great job in the secondary, um, stopping the pass in, in, the, in the second half as well. And it's just one of those tough, gritty, fought, hard fall games and proud of the way our guys played. Um, you know, and I, and I think, um, I think, man, it's, it's been great to win four in a row, um, you know, and we got to the halfway point. Everybody talked about how daunting the, the, the that last six games are. And, you know, our guys are taking it one day at a time, one game at a time, and um, and taking care of business. I'm really proud of them for that. Um, you know, it doesn't get any easier. We go to Clemson next week. We're looking forward to that game and um, and, and get back to the practice field. And, uh, you know, I, I do want to, you know, you know, really say something about our, our crowd. I mean, our, our student section was phenomenal tonight um, across the way. The band, which is right beside them, um, a ton of noise coming from that section. So I'm really proud of our students for coming out and supporting this team. Um, you know, coming off a, you know, a big win, beat Wake Forest, number 10 team in the country, and, and three in a row, and trying to get four in a row, and trying to get bowl eligible. And so I really, really appreciate our students for coming out and, and being loud tonight. Um, and um, again, just, just proud of our team. Looking forward to, to getting back in here tomorrow. Scott, you mentioned bowl eligibility. Following the slow start of this team, what's it mean to, to get that sixth one under your belt? Yeah, it's huge. I mean, obviously, I mean, I, you know, we all we all fighting for postseason play, and um, you know, to try to you know try to continue to, to work with our football team. Um, you know, and, and I know how crazy uh, bowl season it has become now uh, with players not playing and all that. But you're going to be working with somebody, you know, and so we're going to be working with a lot of players. Um, so I'm looking forward to December. With that, you know, we, we, we also bring a lot of recruits in in December, so it's always good to be practicing and let them come around the building and see and hang out with our guys. Um, you know, so, so that part's great, you know. Um, you know, but, but we still got a lot of work to do. That's why I told our team in the locker room tonight, you know, we're, we're not finished yet. We, we want to continue to become a really good football team, to get to work on the little things we need to work on to become a really good football team. And, um, you know, let's continue to get better. Oh shoot! We got we still got three more weeks in the regular season, and uh, so let's go have a great week of practice, and that's that's the biggest thing. Scott, you guys struggled a little bit in the first half offensively. It looked like James Madison was doing some good things defensively on the defensive line. What was the biggest change in the second half when you guys really got things rolling offensively? Well, we just kind of stuck to it. Um, you know, James Madison's good. I mean, they got a good defense, one of the top defense in the country. I you know I don't care who they play, what they're. Well, you know, it was FCS, that doesn't matter. Um, they got a good scheme. Their kids play hard. Uh, they, they were blitzing every other play, if not every play. <laughs> There's a lot of pressures that were coming. Um, you know, and, and so our guys just kept battling. I, you know, and I think the biggest difference was we just continued to, to stick with the game plan, and we started popping some runs on them. And, um, you know, and, and then mixing in some of the throws. T. Huddy had a great game tonight. Um, you know, Ford had some big catches. Uh, thought Malik sat in there with, with some pressure that were coming quite often, sitting in there making some nice throws. Um, you know, but I'm really proud of our offensive line tight ends blocking in the run game. You know, these guys had given up, what, 385 total in the whole year, and we rushed for 244 yards and, um, and had two backs over 100 yards. I mean, that's, that's big. And, you know, we just kept sticking with it. Our guys up front, our offensive line played great tonight, and, and the tight ends blocked really well because it – it wasn't just blocking a normal box. I mean, there's there's eight and nine guys in the box. Tyon's run, everybody's within six yards of the line of scrimmage. You know, I, I knew once he broke it, I was like, oh, he's gone. There's nobody back there, you know. Um, so so just really proud of the guys opening up those holes. And, 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 man, Jordan, he ran so hard tonight. I mean, breaking tackles and forward lean and getting those tough extra yards. Um, really proud of both of those guys in the backfield. You hustled your team off the field in post game. Yeah. I didn't know, uh, you know, normally you meet at the midfield mm -hmm. logo to a prayer. Why did you decide to hustle too much? Well, I mean, there was some chipping that's going on in the second half. And, um, you know, we saw what happened with Malik getting thrown up into the wall of the stadium. I've never seen anything like that. And, uh, you know, and I, you know, so our players were going to protect him, trying to get him out of that. It's on their sideline. And, um, you know, and, man, that was a bad scene. And, 
Uh, I was worried about our guys coming off the bench, going over there, you know, maybe you get somebody gets a flag or something or, or they're thrown out and now they can't play next week, you know. So I didn't, I didn't want any extracurricular activities at the end of the game. And, um, you know, so I just thought it was best, hey, let's just get off the field quickly and um, get our guys in the locker room and, and um, so, so nothing crazy would happen. Yeah, Scott, I guess, did you have to talk to the guys to try to keep them composed? Because, yeah, there were some situations, the targeting, the, yeah. the, the Braden Smith play on punt. You know, did you have to kind of talk to these guys? To kind of nah, yeah, I mean, we told our guys, just keep it cool. You know, hey, we got too much invested in this. And, um, you know, we got an old team. You know, these guys are mature. They get fired up. They, 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 they you know, and they want to protect their guys, um, you know, which is, which is healthy and normal. And, um, you know, so, but, but yeah, you know, I just say, just relax, calm down, we'll handle it, and then let your plate, you know, you know, do your talking. And then I was proud of Malik, so I stayed in there and threw that touchdown pass to Omari and a really good throw in the back of the end zone. So, that, I mean, that, that, that means more than going over there and just, you know, talking or trying to, you know, run your mouth to the opponent. So um, I was proud of the guys, how they kept their cool um, and, and then finished off the game. Did you guys prepare all week like Todd Santay would be quarterback for JMU coming off his injury? Yes. And were you surprised at all of Jamie's play calling on the passing ball as many times as they did? Um, you know, not. I mean, I, you know, you never know what somebody's going to do, so you, you just got to try to defend what they were doing. It just looked like to me they were trying to run the football, shorten the game, let the clock run, uh, limit the amount of plays we run offensively, and they did a good job with that in the second half. And then, in the th I mean, in the first half, second half we kind of wore down and defensively, you know, stuff stopped the run. I think that was a big difference. Are there any one or two things you think you really emphasized or, or did to keep the team moving in the right direction after you guys lost that game to Boston College? I mean, I don't think there's just one one thing that we emphasized. You know, we're tired of losing close games. You know, and I think we just came out and uh, each day like really get specific on what we're running on defense, what we're running on offense. Um, you know, offensively get the ball in the hands of some playmakers. Let's be real specific in what we're trying to do. Um, let's keep it simple. Um, and let our kids play fast um, and don't beat ourselves, you know. And I think, um, you know, we've done a much better job with that um, over the last four games. And, you know, and you win a lot of football games that way. And, you know, but I, again, I just give a lot of credit to our staff and our players for believing and, um, and just continue to work. And, uh, you know, we're sitting here six and three, but I mean, people probably thought that after the BC game. And, uh, you know, just give a lot of credit to our guys in this building. Last one, Alexis. Scott, two things for me. First one, Tyler mentioned just kind of how, you know, after a certain point, they just didn't feel the pressure. They just kind of had like, mm -hmm. that nothing lose kind of mentality. Mm -hmm. How much have you noticed this team play a lot more free, I guess, after Boston College and kind of playing with that chip on their shoulder? And then how important is it to have this momentum and confidence going into place yeah. like Clemson? Yeah, you know, I think that, that we, we, we are still having fun, you know, and I think that allows you to play loose. And, and, and that's the way practice has been. Um, flying around in practice, um, you know, and, and that, that it's coming from the players, you know, which is awesome, you know, and, and we want player-led team. We want the guys to, to have it internally to be able to want to come every day to get better, and they've been doing that. We've been competing in practice and having fun with it, you know, but then the real fun is when you go out and you, and you play, make plays on the field, and our guys have been doing that, uh, and, and that, that's where the fun comes in. And, you know, we've gotten a lot of confidence, you know, even at halftime, hey, we're sitting there at 10 and 10, and it felt like, hey, we'll go out to the second half and let's, let's go get this game. And we knew it was going to be a four-quarter battle. That's why they played four quarters and not two. And uh, so our guys went out and finished it. We did it against Pitt. We did it against Wake. I mean, that's, that's what we've been doing. Um, and that's what we're going to have to continue to do. Uh, it's going to be big-time battles. You mentioned Clemson. That's a tough place to go win. I mean, what is it? I mean, 38 in a row at home? 38. 38 in a row. So it's hard, it's hard to go win down there. Um, you know, it's a great environment. They have a lot of people. It's loud. It's crazy, um, chaotic. Um, we've been in tough environments. We've been backs against the walls a lot. So, hey, let's have a great week of practice and let's go down there and, and try to play a great football game. All right.